My name is Oliver Haynes and I'm a photojournalist. What brought me to Hong Kong? So at the time I was based in Manila, Philippines, uh, where, where I'm still in fact based. Um, I'd been freelancing as a news photographer and working on some other projects when the protest movement ignited in, in, in June. Um, now, I, I'd never been to China or, or Hong Kong before, um, but I'd always had an interest in the region and, and had wanted to go um, previously. And um, then obviously what was happening from, from, from June onward was um, incredibly difficult to ignore. And, you know, it was front page news, um, as it should have been. And um, I was keeping a close eye on on the situation, what was happening there, as, as many people were. And um, but I, I wasn't sure how how long it was going to last. Um, and then you know June rolled by, July rolled by, August rolled by, and um, there was really no signs that the um, you know the movement was slowing down. If anything, it was it was still winding up. And um, that's when a, a friend um, said to me, "No, no, I think you should go and um, go across and shoot and and, and see." what's happening and by that point things were uh, really um, starting to become more tense and violent in the lead up to the anniversary of the People's Republic of China on October 1st and so that was it from there um, I booked a ticket I was on the flight the next day this was about mid-September um, and yeah the rest is uh, rest is history since that point I've made two trips um, to Hong Kong I think you know that first trip um, in mid-September to early October was was really um, just an opportunity to get a better understanding of the movement and find my feet and and feel um, more comfortable or as comfortable as I could be shooting in that environment because I'd never um, shot such an intense um, never shot in such an intense protest environment before um, so I didn't know what to expect um, and then on the second trip um, from um, late October for about uh, six weeks. That's when I really felt I was able to you know, contribute from a from a place of awareness and, and understanding in the in the work I was doing for two different photo agencies at the time. So, so yeah, that's what that's what brought me to Hong Kong. How did this photo come to be? So this frame came from one of many nights spent in in Mong Kok, um, outside Mong Kok Police Station and then Prince Edward MTR Station. Um, that, that MTR station in question was uh, actually a place of uh, much controversy um, at the time. It was reported that some protesters had gone missing and um, after being chased by um, police um, down in the station and um, as many you know, reporters and journalists would know, it was uh, it became almost a nightly ritual for protesters and pedestrians to you know, gather out the front of um, Prince Edward MTR, which was right next door to Mong Kok Police Station, and they would heckle and direct gestures towards the station and point lasers, um, which would ultimately result in police coming out and standing off with protesters and. Um, firing tear gas to disperse the crowd. So this um, photo came from one of those nights um, and uh, it was actually during one of the longest stretches of unrest that I'd seen during my time in, 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 in Hong Kong. Um, it was about five days after the death of university student Alex Chow. Um, he died as a result of injuries um, that he sustained reportedly trying to flee from tear gas fired by police. Um, so things were very, people were very, very angry. Um, and things were very, very tense during this particular week. And um, on this night, um, there was a lot of protesters in Mong Kok. They'd gathered out the um, at the front. They'd been throwing petrol bombs uh, repeatedly towards the um, towards the station, and police had been firing rubber bullets from the top of the station. And um, I was on one side of the road. They, they'd formed a barricade, as you can see in the photo, and um, I was on one side of the road and I wanted to get to the other side to shoot from shoot from that direction. And as I was crossing, which I wanted to do it quite quickly because police were firing rubber bullets and I didn't want to get hit by one of those. Um, as I was crossing the road, I saw that they, you know, the police had started to spot, they used a spotlight on some of the protesters and in this shot there, spotlight into um, the two individuals in the middle. and. Um, um, yeah, so I just took a few frames and got to the other side and, and, and kept shooting. So that's how this this photo came to be. Uh, what was the biggest takeaway uh, from my experience covering the protests in Hong Kong? Um, obviously, 
so many things um, we could probably talk about here, but I'll go with this one. One takeaway was certainly just observing the extremes in the benefits and the, the drawbacks of online and, and social media channels. Um, you know, I read this was one of the most live streamed and maybe even one of the most widely reported um, social movements, protest movements ever, uh, which for any journalist, you know, working in Hong Kong, you know, Hong Kong, this it doesn't come as a, as a surprise because, you know, in some instances you'd see, um, you know, the journalists and, you know, people with iPhones and selfie sticks would be outnumbering the protesters at certain events. Um and, you know, it was always inspirational to see, um, you know, so many, you know, citizen journalists and pedestrians with their iPhones out and selfie sticks and, um, you know, filming the police and the protests and wanting to hold, uh, you know, people accountable and wanting to show the world um, what was happening. Um, and uh, all of this was of huge benefit, um, you, know, you know, to the movement and it, uh, you know, allowed the movement to reach, um, you know, people all over the world and ultimately, you know, even affect policy changes in the US. And it was a huge global outcry and, you know, people pledging their support for Hong Kong and, um, and obviously all very aware of um, how social media works and the, you know, the, the, the effect it's had on society, but to see it, you know, magnified. Um, in the protest um, movement was something different. And, you know, on the flip, whilst there was huge, there is huge benefits, um, we also saw huge disadvantages, um, which um, comes from just so many protesters communicating online and um, so many messages flying around and different ideas that, uh, you know, it's what some people feel has um, contributed to, uh, you know, lack of leadership structure and people becoming confused about exactly what they're doing and then losing focus because there's just so much information and misinformation and, and fake news as well that you can be distributed online. And, um, and of course, yes, it has been great to rally the troops and get people involved in the protests, but um, also just the, the sheer volume of, of, of messages and information out there is, um, is, is has caused problems and can be a disadvantage to the to the movement. So they need to work out um, how to manage that going forward, um, so it doesn't um, cause too many problems in the long run and risk delegitimizing the the movement. But um, yeah, I think that was um, that was a big takeaway.